So uh, hello, everyone. I'm Catherine Wilhelm at the US Asia Law Institute at NYU School of Law. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We're excited to bring you a program called Using Law to Combat Sexual Harassment in Japan. This is the fourth webinar in our series about gender equality and the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or CEDAW. Earlier webinars in the series focused on women's property rights, on how CEDAW is implemented in East Asia, and on the Korean women's movement. We recorded those programs and you can watch them on our website in both English and Chinese. Uh, today's program is also being translated simultaneously into Chinese. And now I want to introduce today's guest speaker, Kazuko Ito, who is the founder and vice president of Human Rights Now, uh, which is a human rights organization based in Japan. And she is also an attorney. She is the chair of the Gender Equality Committee of the Japan Federation of Bar Associations, a board member of the Gender Law Society and International Human Rights Law Society in Japan. Uh, Ms. Ito has written numerous books and articles on human rights topics, including a chapter in the 2020 book, The Global Me Too Movement, How Social Media Propelled a Historic Movement and How the Law Responded. And we've put together a, uh, a PDF of reading materials about um, Me Too in Japan uh, in English and Chinese uh, for those of you who are curious, want to read more about the recent legal reforms in Japan, and the link to that material will be shared in the chat panel. And now, uh, before I invite uh, Kazuko to begin, we're going to conduct a very quick on-screen poll of the audience so that the speaker can better understand who she is speaking to and your level of uh, of understanding. So would you please, uh, everyone, just click on the choice that best, best fits you. Are you a scholar, a lawyer, <clears throat> a researcher, a student, an NGO practitioner, and so on? And we are, <clears throat> we are going to make this program as interactive as possible. Um, Kazuko is going to be speaking for about an hour. Um, and then after that, we're going to have a Q&A session for half an hour. But you can begin posting your questions in the chat box as we go along. And we'll be collecting them. And then <clears throat> when she finishes with her presentation, we'll respond. Uh, she will respond to them. So now, um, Kazuko, I invite you to begin. And we look forward to your presentation. Thank you very much, Kelsey, for your uh, kind introduction to me. And then, so uh, thank you very much for NYU to invite me to uh, such a great opportunity for me to uh, share uh, our struggle uh, to fight against uh, the violence against women. So I'm going to talk about uh, the how we uh, achieve the, the legal development law reform in terms of the, the sexual harassment and sexual violence in Japan. It is not easy uh, journey. It was not really easy journey for us. Uh, we have a lot of struggle and uh, we have a lot of difficulty to overcome. Uh, but uh, this year, uh, we successfully uh, amended the law uh, in relation to the sexual violence and sexual harassment in Japan. So uh, my journey started from uh, 1994 when I became a lawyer. But uh, more specifically, I started my uh, you know, advocacy uh, to uh, make a law reform uh, in back to 2019 when Me Too movement started. So uh, Me Too movement, uh, you may know better than me. Uh, yes, in 2017, uh, it's a six years ago. And Hollywood actress uh, Liber, uh, their uh, experience of being subjected to sexual harassment and sexual violence. And then so they use the hashtag MeToo and express uh, their stories. And it was widely shared uh, by the Twitter and social media and become a big movement. Yeah. 
And it is not only in the U.S., but also the entire world uh, that the Me Too movement was flourished. But in Japan, it was not really easy uh, to, uh, uh, you know, um, start a Me Too movement. So uh, when we start uh, the Me Too movement in 2017 in Japan, uh, people said Me Too would put silence breaker at risk in Japan because uh, women asked, Women who are subjected to the sexual violence are silenced in Japan. Yes, uh, let me introduce a little bit the statistical side of the story. <clears throat> so according to the National Police Agency in Japan, uh, yeah, it was in 2016, the police accepted less than uh, 1,000 cases, rape cases, yes, however, Cabinet Office survey tells us that 7.8 of women and 1.5% of the women had experience of forcible sexual intercourse against their will. The population in Japan is like, like this huge. Yeah, <clears throat> so there's some gap in between the victimization and the case that appear to the police. Yes, why it's happened. So uh, usually uh, the people, especially a survivor, <laughs> express the uh, 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 situation. They're the one uh, who would be, uh, uh, you know, blamed. So uh, the, when, when the women said, you know, I was sexually assaulted, that the reaction of the society is like that. Uh, you're the guilty one who, you know, for dressing like that. You're the guilty one for having a drink with a man. So it is not your fault, it is your fault, and but you raise your voice. So it is quite the same who thinks. That is the reaction by the society in Japan. The society really blames the perpetrators, and society really questions the social norm which condone the sexual violence and harassment. And then, so let me uh, touch, touch upon that the uh, situation and the status of the access to justice uh, in Japan regarding the sexual violence. According to the 2014 the statistic from the Japanese government, and uh, women who experience um, sexual assault, uh, 70, uh, around 70% 70 of women never consulted with anybody. And only 4.3% of women speak with police. And for women, police are not really friendly and accessible, not survivally friendly, and cause stressful long, long hour interviews. And then, so they're bored uh, doing uh, the sexual thing on rapists. And in the end, so they encounter the disappointing result. Yes. And the prosecution rate for rape is less than 30% in Japan. So uh, why? Because of that, the penal code uh, is uh, uh, very problematic. The, under the penal code, uh, that rape um, definition of rape is quite narrow. Either use of force or threat was an essential element to establish some crime of rape under Japanese crime uh, penal code. And then we have the quasi rape. And then so, uh, but a quasi rape also requires circumstances that victim cannot resist. And then so, uh, this uh, that the judiciary always requires very very hard reason. You know, violence should be very hard, and also the circumstances that victim cannot resist should be very hard. Yes. So the question comes to us. Why is sexual intercourse without consent not punishable? Even if sexual intercourse is not based on the con uh, consent that the judiciary requires, but more higher uh, requirement. Uh, but this is because the penal code requires like this. Yes. And another essential element of the rape is intention. And the judge determined this fact based on the prevailing is mindset among men. And then this is a poll. This is very, very shameful. 
but it was a poll uh, conducted by the NHK, a Japanese national broadcast. Yeah, and according to the poll, and then so that the uh, you know poll was uh, you know, among men, and this is uh, that the answer that men answered that female behavior that deemed as sexual consent. According to that, 11% of the men think, you know, that dinner with a man means the sexual consent. And 27% uh, of the men think drinking with a man means the sexual consent. And then 25% grabbing with a man. And then 23% revealing the clothes. And 35% is the being dead drunk. Yes, but dead drunk means that she is not conscious, so she cannot decide whether uh, they can provide consent or not. Yeah, they can't. She can't, you know, uh, determine yes or no. So it is quite distorted conception. But this is a prevailing, uh, you know, uh, the perception about the sexual consent in Japan. It is quite shameful for me. But uh, this reflects that entire decision making of that, uh, you know, determination of the um, crime of rape in Japan. But uh, if someone uh, starts to challenge this kind of system, uh, here is a photo of the Siori Ito, uh, who is a journalist, a young journalist. Uh, she was allegedly uh, raped by uh, the senior journalist. Uh, in Japan. And then this man was very powerful, and she is biographer of the, the former prime minister. Yes. And uh, according to her, you know, uh, uh, case, uh, she approached to him because she wanted to become a journalist, and then so she wanted to consult with him about that how to get uh, some status uh, uh, you know, in his TV companies, as the interns or you know, business things happened, she wants she wants to consult with him, and then so she, uh, that perpetrator, invite her to uh, some dinner, and then she wasn't intent to have dinner with him, but at the time, uh, she got drunk some Japanese sake, and then she lost her consciousness, and then when she wake up. She was just, you know, being raped in the hotel room by him. But in this case, was not indicted by the prosecutor. And she was, she didn't give up on this case. And she um, claimed to the panel to review the decision, not to indict the case. But again, the panel re result is, you know, prosecutor's decision not to indict this case was correct, no problem. That was a decision. Usually women uh, give up in this point, but she didn't give up. And instead of giving up, she filed a lawsuit on the compensation claim to him. And then also, uh, it's quite unusual, but she, usual uh, victim and survivor uh, try to uh, you know, cover up her face and name and identity, but she exposed her identity and real name and her face and hold a press conference and appeal what happened to her. And also, she wrote a book, this book named Black Box. And in this book, she described what she experienced during, you know, her victimization and also what happened. She went to police and what happened uh, during the conversation with the prosecutor. And then later on, uh, she, based on this experience, uh, she made concrete recommendation how Japanese society and how Japanese judicial system must do change. So that is a book all about. It was widely uh, you know, uh, known and then told, uh, not only in Japan, but in China and other places in the world. It was widely translated. Yes. But what happened to her is uh, she's actually the silence breaker in Japan. 
but she encountered online harassment yeah, and hate speech against her. And then so she got some death threat. Yeah, and she had security problem and she had uh, no choice but to leave Japan and stay some years in the UK. Now she come back to Japan, but uh, you know, her struggle was very, very painful. So second rape was happening all the time until recently. She won the case in the Supreme Court in the civil civil claim. So, but until recently, she was so hard time to achieve justice. But this is not the one only case, one case. And then so uh, her struggle inspire a lot of women and female journalists and many, many ordinary women. The one issue was uh, that uh, this is a uh, issue uh, concerning the finance ministry in Japan. And the journalists, a uh, female journalist, yeah, were harassed by uh, the top bureaucrat in the finance ministry. Yes, yes. During the interview, you know, uh, that guy, that the top bureaucrat, always saying very, very nasty sexual harassment things. Yes. And she told the TV company, but no action was taken. And she then told to a magazine, and then uh, which magazine reported uh, this incident. And he, that this is the top bureaucrat, he resigned. And also that the ministry uh, you know, apologized to her and there was uh, some training session uh, to the, the senior member of the finance ministry happened uh, by, about the, the sexual harassment. But the reaction by the, the top of the ministry, the ministry, finance minister, so this is, he's a politician. What he said is, you know, what is the problem? Yeah. The Miss minister said, there is no sexual harassment crime in Japan. So he just underestimated uh, this claim at all. Yeah, this is not a very big deal. This is not, this should not be a big scandal. So he really underestimate uh, the magnitude of that victimization of sexual harassment. It was in 2018. Yes. How to counter this kind of mindset in Japan? So we human rights now, uh, together with uh, that the victim support group and civil society organization supports the Me Too movement. For instance, we invited uh, Ms. Siori Ito to our event and campaign. And then not only in Japan, but also at the UN headquarters, New York. And uh, this is a photo in the, our New York event. Yes. Yes, not only theory, but also we supported a lot of Me Too activists and Me Too science breakers. The survivors spoke up and society uh, supported. That's very good. And also, all, at the same time, society was encouraged by their courage. And we share the same view and empower each other and determine we must change the society and we must change the law. Yes. And then, so this is the current recent phenomena. Uh, SDF, SDF is Japanese uh, the Self Defense Force. Uh, it's a bit uh, similar to the military, and uh, she is uh, that uh, young uh, personnel in the SDF. Yeah, during the service uh, in the SDF, she was repeatedly subjected to the sexual harassment, and uh, even after the reporting in the internal complaint mechanism. There was no punishment for the perpetrators and all denied the fact. And she had no choice but quit the SDF. So she raised her voice on YouTube in July 2022, uh, very last year. And media and on, uh, media recovered her story a lot. An online petition campaign started and huge number of the people supported for his, her online petition. Uh, asked the justice and apology and investigation within the SDF. And uh, it was very supported by the public. And she received a formal apology uh, by the SDF 
in October 2020. So you can look at that. When Ito Shiori uh, raised her voice, she encountered a lot of hate speech. But now in 2022, you know, uh, this lady uh, uh, raised a voice. She got a lot of support from the society. So that means society learned how to support the survivors, how to support the silence breaker. And then, so in the meantime, um, in the meantime, uh, the judicial situation, judicial uh, decision was uh, sort of hopeless. So one case was very, very pro problematic. Uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, the decision uh, in the district court, some district court in Japan in 2019. So in this case, 90 years old women was sexually abused by her father. Yeah. And then, so uh, in March 2019, the Japanese district court acquitted the father. Although the court found that father, father had sex with the daughter against her will, the court decided it did not constitute quasi rape because there was no extraordinary situation. Are preventing her from the resisting. So, as I said, um, you know, in the quasi rape, there is a uh, you know requirement to uh, not to uh, there is uh, circumstances not to resist. <clears throat> this is a requirement. So this, as uh, the judge said, this requirement needs very very high amount of extraordinary situation. But in this uh, case, it doesn't meet in this criteria. But this decision highlights how different from non-consensual sex to other uh, something establish the rape crime. And this decision trigger anger among the Japanese women. And here it's uh, that the flower demonstration happened starting from uh, that decision. After this decision, the civil society uh, called for entire survivors, women, and the civil society together to express solidarity uh, to the survivor in this case, meaning the 90 years old lady, as well as all, survivor, all survivors who cannot achieve the justice. Yeah. Uh, this is called flower demonstration. Uh, instead of having some banners or something like that, so we bring the flower and express solidarity to that uh, survivor of sexual harassment and violence. And then uh, people gather and then express and talk their own stories. So every month of day of 11, the people gather in front of the station of that every prefect prefecture, you know, main uh, one of the main uh, station around the surround that main station station of that prefecture, and then start this kind of demonstration. This is called for a demonstration. So every single month in every prefecture, women and survivor and civil society continue this flower demonstration until now. Even during the COVID, we continue this fight. Yes. And this inspired a lot of women and uh, empowered uh, that the lawmaker themselves. And then so sometimes lawmaker uh, participate to that flower demonstration and they determine we must do something. That's really persuasive activities among civil society. <laughs> so our organization Human Rights Now <clears throat> consider we must do something as a practitioner and expert of the law. So when we talk about how to make law a uh, reform, so we must look into that what other countries are doing and also look at the international standards. So when, uh, when we uh, decide determine we must achieve the law reform, we uh, decided to conduct comparative study 
of the, the late primal. And then we found that uh, evolving international standards uh, in terms of the sex, sex crime. Yes. So we conducted 10 countries uh, research, comparative research of the rape crime law. And then we found many countries go to no means, no registration. Yes. No means, no means that uh, rape uh, is as uh, defined as sex against the will of the others. And then for instance, Germany, UK, India, Canada, and some part of the United States as well uh, adopt these types of legislation. And more progressively, a uh, country like Sweden, Denmark, or Spain adopts the yes means yes registration. Rape is defined as having sex without consent of the others. Yes. So uh, what's the difference between no means no and yes means yes means that uh, in case of the no means no, if the, the other party said no, you shouldn't go beyond. You shouldn't, you should just stop your action. If you, uh, you know, conduct sexual, sexual act, uh, although the other party say no. So this is constitute a crime. And yes means yes means that the some, if someone wants to have sexual activity with the other party, you must ask their consent in advance. If there is no consent, so this is a crime. If the person is just hesitating and say nothing, and then the one person uh, just conduct sexual act, uh, this is also a crime uh, in the yes means yes registration. Yes. And then other jurisdiction, did, even though they do not have yet no means no or yes means yes, they introduce sexual crime, including taking advantage of power relationships. For instance, teacher, survivor, uh, su supervisor, etc., and both and yeah, client, etc. Yeah. So uh, this kind of re uh, registration was adopted in Finland, Thailand, and Korea. Yes. So compared to the other jurisdiction, we found Japanese rape law is far behind, and women and survivor are not really protected by the rape law in Japan. And then also, it's really a uh, shameful thing, but the sexual consent, uh, age of the sexual consent is very problematic in Japan. So in Japan, uh, it used to be a 13 years old was sexual age of sexual consent, but it is quite low. German, uh, Germany, 14 years old. France, Sweden, 15 years old. Canada, UK, Finland, Korea, Taiwan, 16 years old. That means Japanese law does not help and protect minor. So you don't, you can't imagine Japanese uh, girl or boy are so mature in sexually and then their sexually educated is not true at all. So the facts show Japan does not protect minor from the sexual assault and sexual violence. So we must change this kind of a situation. So based on that a comparative study of the 10 jurisdictions, we made concrete recommendations. Yes, uh, this is an event uh, called uh, in 2018. Yeah. And then our recommendation is that uh, the revised law related to sexual violence and limits elements such as violence or threat and introduce yes means yes law, uh, such as the Swedish law and criminalize sex offense by abusing power and raise the age of sexual consent from 13 years old to 16 years old. That's our demand and recommendations. And then in order to uh, uh, activate this campaign, we invited uh, that the prosecutor and also uh, that the person from the Ministry of Justice from Sweden. And then we are so thankful uh, to the Swedish Embassy Japan. So they uh, work together with us and then they invite some uh, so people. And then so the Swedish, uh, we uh, shared pretty Swedish experience. That uh, make us uh, you know, motivated more and we can achieve this kind of registration. 
So it was, uh, you know, uh, before uh, that COVID happened, right before the COVID. Yes. And then also we conducted petition campaign, not only Human Rights Now, but also to other civil society organization. One is the, you know, the group uh, constituted by the survivor of the sexual violence. And other group, Voice Up Japan, uh, this is the young uh, generation create group. Voice up, yes. And then, so in March 2020, we submitted a huge number of online petition to a uh, demand a uh, comprehensive and drastic reform of that uh, sex crime law in Japan. Yes. And then, so based on that uh, our, our online petition, uh, the consideration was given within the Ministry of Justice. And in June 2020, Mr. Minister of Justice established a study committee which concluded to review uh, the current, uh, you know, uh, the rape law. And this study committee concluded its study in March 2021. And in two, September 2021, the Legislative Council of the Ministry of Justice has assigned uh, the working group on this matter based on the study above. So that means that the uh, Ministry of Justice uh, conduct a uh, study and also actual uh, deliberation to how to change the current penal code. Yes. So as uh, you know, movement and then also the civil society's reaction, uh, you know, facilitate uh, this kind of change in the Ministry of Justice. And then Minister herself uh, take initiative. And then role of civil society was huge. So there are the number of the organization uh, started the uh, you know uh, coalition to uh, achieve the uh, penal code reform. So represented of that organization together, uh, together with the Ministry of Justice. Yes, yes. And also this is a book published by me. Uh, the title is Why This Case. Uh, uh, why judge uh, judge decide this case uh, not guilty? Yeah, I described very very many 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 cases in 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 that case that justice was not achieved at all for the victim of sexual violence. I described a lot of cases based on my own experience as well as a case law. And I also propose concrete recommendations how to change the law. Yes. And then, so based on that study going on, and then some legislative council of the Ministry of Justice uh, deliver how to change the law. However, who as a member of the legislative council? Bunch of the, the professors, <laughs> law professors male law professors specialized criminal law. They are not really uh, attached with the society, especially the voice of the vulnerable people, especially survivors. They don't really know how sexual harassment and sexual violence are perpetrated yeah, in the society. So they read a book, they read, uh, you know, uh, the uh, some judgment, but judgment is very, very, um, you know, tip of iceberg. And then, so um, it's not really reflect the big actual, uh, you know, a victimization uh, in reality. So that is why, you know, uh, that the legislative council's uh, proposal, initial proposal in the fall of 2000. 22, yeah, actually, one year before, one year ago, they make made, they made some initial proposal. It was very ridiculous proposal. And then, so they insist on the previous perception of that rape crimes. Yes. And then, so, yeah, yeah, it's really a ridiculous proposal was made. Yeah. For instance, you know, the 
uh, that the constitution requirement should be difficult to reject or ability to resist. This kind of, you know, uh, the uh, text should be included. That was proposed by uh, the, the Legislative Council. So we get very angry about this kind of, you know, um, a proposal. This is far from that our experience, far from the victim's experience at all. So that's why we uh, decided to conduct online action with anger. This, this happened in two, December 2022. And then so many women's activists and scholars, influential women get together and then they uh, express their anger about the current proposal and demand comprehensive and drastic change in the rape law in order to protect the victim from sexual violence and sexual harassment. So, uh, yeah, there are the member, one, uh, several member. So some of the face you might be familiar with. So Professor Chizuko Ueno was part of a uh, online action. It was a very small action, but it was very powerful. Yeah. So we can express, you know, our anger about that uh, current proposal. Then that legislative council gave up to insist on that uh, you know, initial proposal. Yeah. And then they made new proposal that was much better. And that was based on that current law passed some objection to our proposal and we must tackle with this kind of opinion. And then so uh, in March this year, FINA code was finally drafted and then inanimately bought in diet uh, this June uh, this year in Japan. So I can say this is a huge progress and we can achieve yeah, development in terms of that, uh, you know, changes. Yes, so yeah, first of all, the title of climb, climb was totally changed. Article 176 of Penal Code changed from possible indecency to non-consensual indecency. Yeah. Indecency means that uh, usually a sexual assault crime rather than uh, accepts a rape. Yeah. So in Japan, it was named as possible indecency, but it was changed. The, the name of the title was transformed from um, possible to non-consensual. And secondly, Article 177 of the penal code. This was a forcible sexual intercourse. That is a rape in Japan. And previous uh, title of the crime was that forcible sexual intercourse, but it was transformed to non-consensual sexual intercourse. Yes, yes. So it is important to note that article clarifies that nature of the sex crime is not forcible but the non-consensual. Yeah, this is a huge difference on development. Yeah. So as a result of the amendment, the text of that, uh, that uh, you know, these two articles uh, have, uh, you know, uh, dramatically changed. So article 176 and 77 annually stipulated as a crime of, uh, element of the crime as causing a person to form, express, or fulfill an intention not to consent, or take, taking advantage of such a status as a constitutive, constitutive requirement. This is very complicated. Why you are not saying like just no means no, or yes means yes. 
but then um, Japanese, you know, uh, that the Ministry of Justice carefully designed this constitution, this uh, constitutive requirement, holding a person to form, express, or fulfill an intention not to consent. Yes. Anyway, the fact that non-consent by the other party uh, to the sex act has become a core of that requirement. That can be evaluated as a major shift from the previous constitutional requirement. We think it's a significant development. So this is not uh, that uh, violence or threat oriented, but uh, that consent is a core element. Consent, no consent is a core element to establish a crime. This is big, big step. So in order to determine whether a crime is established, the following are the eight situation and act were listed as the act or reasons in the article. This is a little bit complicated, but then uh, so not only uh, you know uh, that the exam uh, 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 set set forth that the a requirement, but also uh, that the law introduced eight. A situation or act in order to determine whether non consensual sexual, sexual act happened or not. The one is the use of being subjected to violence or threat. So, but a violence or threat used to be a, a element of the crime in 19, uh, 176 and 77, but the level of the violence and threat become very low. The previously, a very heavy violence or threat were required, but current uh, documents, current uh, the legislation said violence and threat are even very very lower stage. It might it is constituted uh, that a fact for reasons under this article, and also number two is causing or resulting in physical or mental uh, impairment. Number three is that uh, ingesting alcohol or drink or effect thereof. And number four, to cause or keep in a state of sleep or other state of unconsciousness. Yes, that's really clear. And number five, the lack of time uh, to form, express, or feel free as an intent to disagree. And then number six, that frighten or subtle by confronting situations that is different from what is expected and to be frightened or subtle in the face of such situation. Yes. And then number seven, causing or resulting of psychological reaction attitude uh, to the uh, continuous abuse. Yeah. And then eight, that to be concerned a cause concern about the disadvantage who is one is subjected due to the influence based on the one's position in economic or social relationship. Yes, this is eight, uh, eight uh, listed, the eight kind of situations. So, and then, so not only this eight situation, but similar situation can be counted as a situation that, um, constitutes uh, this uh, main uh, requirement of the crime. Yes. So uh, any one of them, if any of one of them are fulfilled, it can be determined uh, this requirement. Yes. And then, so why it is very significant? I think the age situation and act stipulated in the provision are the pattern of perpetration that have entrapped many victims and shut them off from the judicial remedy. It's very typical, typical situation. That was exemplified as a case that non-consensual. And it is significant that harm that have been excluded from the judicial system are now within the scope of the legal remedy and punishment. Yes, and especially uh, in this kind of situation, you know, usually people said, oh, we have no intention, but this is stipulated. That is why, you know, perpetrator cannot say 
we don't really know the situation. If there is some situation, and then so、uh, usually people cannot、uh, easily argue there is no intention at all. That's a huge step. Yes. And for instance, category five or six can be applied in the case of tricking or a d r a p t demand for sex and sex. And then in that situation, victims are freezing up and they can't decide anything. They can't act. They can't reject that pattern. So、uh, that kind of case、uh, applied、uh, in that category five or six. And category seven can be applied in the case such as a case that、uh, we get very angry about that 90 years old women sexually abused by her father. Yes. So in this case, the women are sexually assaulted from the age of、uh, like、uh, 14 until 19. When she was raped、uh, when she was 19 years old at the time, she was very psych- psychologically uh, uh, very uh, difficult to resist to father's demand. So that is why you know, her situation does not fall within that、uh, old、uh, provision. Of the rape law. But、uh, now we have category seven, and then this is easily applied to the case like her case. And then category eight is equivalent to the new category of the sex crime that t a k e advantage of status relationship if it is properly implemented. Yes. Yes, that is that、uh, our law, new law.、Uh, You know, from the transforming, from the, the, all the types of rape, narrowed down rape crime to the non consensual sex crime. Big change. And then、uh, I'd like to ch- touch upon several、uh, other changes in the reform. Yes. So one of the things is marital rape. A marital rape was,、uh, you know,、uh, specifically、uh, you know, mentioned. In the new article. So, Article 176 and 76 says,、uh, and inserts the word, regardless of the marital status.、Uh, this was added in the text. So, in order to clarify,、uh, in a confirmatory sense, that the crime of non consensual sex act can be committed even between spouses.、Yes. This is good. And the age of sexual consent. Uh, which was far lower than the other country, has been raised to 16 years old. This is an important step toward protecting children among, against assault、uh, by relatives,、uh, teachers, and employers, and also strangers. However,、uh, this is an argument about that exceptional case. That,、uh, so, Uh, in, between, uh, in case that the、uh, victim were、uh, in between 13 to 16, the perpetrator should be、uh, you know, uh, more than five years old, older than the victim. This is a requirement. So, this is a five year age difference requirement, so called. Yeah. But this is arguable. Yeah. So, why we need such huge age difference? So, as a country also uh, uh, you know, introduced, some country, some jurisdiction also in,、uh, introduced that age difference ex- exception. But exception is like, you know,、um, not three year, not five years, like two years or four years. So, we are not quite sure if this registration is good or not. It is quite debatable right now. And the statute of limitation yeah, was, uh, uh, for the prosecution was extended for five years in each crime. So, in case of rape, it was 10 years previously, and now 15 years. And then also the sexual assault, it was、uh, seven, years, six, uh, six, uh, uh, seven years, but now、uh, 12 years、um, is the statute of limitation. And also, the, with respect to the victim under the age of 18, the starting point of the statute of limitation、uh, will be the day when victim b e c o m e 18 years old. 
the because uh, the especially the young AIDS victim had、uh, a lot of difficulty to raise boys, and sometimes they are so brainwashed, and so they have no choice to raise boys. Yeah, and sometimes you know the you know perpetrator. Uh, the father or some custody, and then there is no circumstances to raise boys. Yeah, or trauma is so hard, and then sometimes,、uh, you know, ten years after, she was just flashback to the memory, and she want to prosecute, but the statute of limitation was、uh, passed, and she cannot, you know,、uh, pursue justice at all. This kind of case can be solved by the. Uh, extension of the statute of limitation. Yes, yeah. So this make it easier to prosecute sex crime against minor. However, victim have pointed out that extension is too short compared to the global standard. In global standard, for instance, some country just abolish entire statute of limitation in the sex crime. That can be、uh, you know recommended to the Japanese uh, uh, future uh, reform. Yes. So also the re redefining the rape is very important.、Uh, you know the how, what what constitutes the rape、uh, other than、uh, that、uh, uh, element of that、uh, non consensual. So yeah, exp、uh, the, this、uh, that the reform achieves、uh, also the expansion of the definition of the sexual intercourse. And sexual intercourse under the Article One Hundred Seventy Seven was expanded in Two Thousand Seventeen Amendment from the only vaginal intercourse、uh, to include anal intercourse or oral intercourse. This was、uh, you know, expanded、uh, in the previous uh, uh, amendment in Two Thousand Seventeen, but new law in addition、uh, that. Uh, 2023 amendment includes the insertion of the body part or some ob object other than the penis into the vagina or anus as a sexual intercourse. So this is an appropriate amendment based on the actual damages. Yeah, this is also very good, important. And then we also a、uh, uh, current amendment also introduced the grooming minor crimes. So following act are now punishable. For instance, a demand to meet child under 16 years old、uh, with a sexual purpose and using intimidation, deception, offering benefit of the other improper meaning. Yeah, and also meeting a child with sex sexual purpose as a result of number one. That is a grooming pattern. And another issue is that the following act are also punishment, punish, punishable. And demanding a child send photo or video recording of the sexual behavior or sexual part of their bodies. So it is a new attempt to prevent early stage of sex offense against minor. Yes. So this is commendable, but still the scope of the grooming, yeah, crime is very narrow. It is also debatable. Yes. And then so. Sort of that you know,、uh, we introduced the non-consensual sex and non-consensual sexual intercourse as a rape,、uh, but、um, it's the term is a little bit ambiguous. So that is why、uh, even after the law bill was introduced、uh, to the diet, we are very skeptical. So that is why we lobbied to the、uh, member of、uh, par parliament so many times, many times. Please clarify what this law means. So we lobby a lot, yeah. And then so on several points, we are not really satisfactory. That is why we really need a、uh, future development of the law. So that should be included、uh, to that current amendment proposal that we really、uh, wanted, and we lobby to the members of parliament. As a result. Yes.、Mm. So there was amendment achieved、uh, in the bill. Yes. So that um yes. 
So, since the revised law still had issue to be discussed, the supplementary provision of the penal code was amended and, and introduced at Article 20 uh, in the supplementary provision that the revised law will be reviewed after five years from entry into force. Yes. So, we achieved a, a very significant development, but even if uh, we get this development, we really need to change and review the law in the future within five years. That was what I did. And then, so in the explanation of the amendment, the member of the parliament proposed as such. So this is his word. In the explaining the purpose of this amendment, Bospo and underscore that this amendment to the law will be established the so-called no means no consensual sex offense as a core element of crime. So he said, uh, this amendment introduced no means no at the first. But however, there is opinion that we should introduce yes means yes registration, etc. That the uh, uh, par member of parliament said. And then, so uh, this is also his quote. So in order to address the matter, we propose to introduce that Article 20 concerning the review and revise the law. And then following four points shall be examined after five years of enforcement. So yeah, the four points to be examined within the five years. Yeah. So one, number one, is creation of the so-called yes means yes provision. That's great. So now we achieve no means no. But maybe five years later, we can achieve yes means yes. Thus, this is a target. And second target is a revision of the so-called five years age difference rule in that uh, cons age of sexual consent. And the third target is establishment of new crime of sex crime uh, taking advantages of influence based on the economic and social status. So we have uh, some provision in the Article 177 but it is still weak, and that is why we really need to have much, you know, precise uh, the uh, article about uh, the sex crime taking advantages of influence based on the economic or social status. Yes. And then further extension, for target four is a further extension of the statute of limitation sex crime. Yes. Yes. And then including the abolition of the statute of limitation. That is uh, the issue uh, we must uh, consider after five years. That's a proposal made by the member of parliamentarian uh, in order to amend uh, the bill. And then, so the bill, as well as his proposal, was unanimously uh, supported and adopted uh, by the member of the parliament. So that is why uh, it is really clear the will of the legislator means we introduce no means no legislation. Yes. Yes. So that's the issue. And then so I'd like to, uh, you know, I exemplify uh, the significance of that the change. So you may know uh, that the Johnny Kitagawa case, uh, that was prepared quite recently by the BBC documentary film. Uh, in this case, that the leader of the journey office in Japan, uh, this is a huge talent agency in Japan, and that has produced an extremely a large number of male stars in Japan, has continuous with uh, sexually assaulted hundreds of minor artists. Yeah, so it's minor, minor are recruited, uh, you can be a star and you can train, you can be, you can, you can train, train, you can be training uh, in the Johnny's office. But at night, the Johnny uh, come in their bedroom and they sexually assault uh, that male talent, minor talent. But it was studied uh, since 1960s until quite recently he died, yeah, in 2000. 19. Yes. It was quite recently rebuilt. Yes. 
And then an expert team established in 2023 determined that there have been indeed been a successful hundred cases of sexual abuse of minors. Yes. So such large scale abuse was covered up by the entire industry. It was only recognized as sex abuse in 2023, uh, this year. But uh, you can look at that current reform. Uh, previously, uh, there was no, you know, uh, provision that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, adult uh, conduct sexual uh, activity with minor. It is not really automatic. It is not uh, automatically a crime. And also, even if the some both of the agency uh, use their influence and commit a sexual harassment, sexual violence to the minor victim. Uh, it is not constituting the crime under the old Japanese law, but new law uh, creates the new norm. And under the new norm, and then so expert committee find this is actually a sexual abuse. So uh, this very, very serious sexual abuse cases only rebelled because of the norm changed and law changed. I think uh, we can we can look at the huge progress was applied uh, to the individual case and the victimization. But uh, our challenge is still going on. So we still have a uh, lot of issues such as sexual objectification about women in media. But young generations start to, you know, fight against such, you know, rape cultures. So for instance, there are lots of, you know, magazines, you know, uh, distributing uh, the rape cultures and the disregarding as a women's consent. But young generations stand up and opposed to this kind of publication. And this is only, uh, also the online petition to uh, make claim and condemn the publisher that disregard the sexual consent of the women. And the young generation started this online campaign and it was very successful. And then publisher uh, had dialogue with the young group, women's group, and then decide not to uh, take up uh, this kind of sexual objectification against women. And then so uh, publication uh, regarding uh, influencing the, the rape culture. That is a very uh, you know, successful campaign, but the, we are fighting in the daily basis. And based on the new law, so, you know, the crime or element of the crime become sexual consent. You know, uh, the rape crime was defined, redefined. And then sex consent, sexual consent is a very, very important element of the crime. And we need to educate this norm uh, to the general public and then in the school, minor, and especially other powerful people in every company and every society and government. And then, so uh, this is uh, the usual educational material used in the UK and other part of the uh, European countries and might be in the United States as well. And uh, this is taking uh, that uh, example from the tea. Yeah, so if you serve tea, uh, in advance, you need to ask if you want to have two tea, yes and no. And then only when the she or he said yes, uh, she, you can serve tea. That's a no, that's a social no. If the tea serving is something like that, why sex is not, has different? So this is a point of that education. So we really need to educate uh, the people and we really need to have nationwide campaign. What is sexual consent? And what is related human rights and sexual consent? Yeah, that is our task. And then, so we really need to move forward. Yes, 
So non-consensual principle should not be nominal one. It should be implemented properly and in line with the international standard. And then, so nationwide campaign is a key effort to enhance understanding of the core message of the amendment. So uh, this is a photo, and we met uh, our civil society group together with other human rights groups and then victim support group, met with our current uh, Ministry of Justice. Yeah. And then we continue to have dialogue with the minister. Yeah. And then doing follow-up. Yeah. So role of civil society is still essential to monitor proper implementation and reform in the future and fight against the rape culture. So our task and our fight is sort of endless. Thank you very much. I'd like to wrap up this, uh, my presentation, and I'm really happy to uh, answer any question. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kazuko, for this informative and very, very tr intriguing presentation. Thank you. Um, so now we um, can bring taking questions. Please put your question in the Q&A box um, so we can read it out to you, uh, for you to the, to the speaker. And while the audience is putting their questions, may I take advantage of asking a question, Kazuko? Um, so I'm very encouraged by your organization and your work in this field. But obviously, you are working in a very patriotic, uh, patriarchal society in Japan. And also, I know the women representatives in, in the uh, legislature and government is very low. So I'm wondering, what's your strategy working with the legislators and government officials, while most of them are male? Yes. So I think that the survivor's voice are so important. So uh, we work together with uh, that survivor group. So we are professional organization. We are uh, specialized law. And we can talk about uh, professional experience. Uh, you know, of the, you know, laws should be like this, like this. So we try to concentrate uh, of, uh, you know, legal expertise. And also, uh, so my organization are constituted by the uh, 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 some lawyers, mainly lawyers, and then and the women's rights team are constituted by experienced female lawyers, and then we have a lot of experience that even if we are with uh, the we are with uh, the victim and go to police, but nothing really happened, we can you know uh, express. We can exemplify. We can, you know, uh, that explain that own experience, and also that uh, we are partnering with that uh, survivor groups, and the survivor groups, um, you know, uh, their voice are so important. And then, yeah, yeah, it was sometimes very moving. And then, even if the conservative politician and male politician may moved by uh, their story, and yeah, so their graveness. Etc. And then, so we work together uh, with that uh, survivor group and victim support group, and we are going to the lobby activity every month. Every month, not only uh, you know, not only quite recently, law was proposed uh, before the diet, but uh, since 2017, uh, not only our organization but other groups uh, every month go to the politician and the bipartisan politician. That, uh, that was uh, not a strategy, but we'd like to uh, build a consensus. Uh, yeah, no matter how the ideology is different. But uh, so this is very, you know, uh, related to humanity. Yeah. And may, uh, victims are not only men, women, but also men. So yeah. So many politicians are so influenced by our, uh, you know, uh, lobbying activity and then especially victim their, their story. That's the sort of strategy. Thank you. And we have questions in the um, chat box. And one is from Yu Yang Bian. And the question is, I noticed that even some Western countries have advanced rape law 
the conviction rate of rape crime is still low because of rape myth acceptance and lack of training of police and prosecutors. So except for the incomplete legislation rape law in Japan, do you observe some institutional or cultural problems in Japanese criminal judicial system when you're dealing with rape cases? Yeah, so we have all the time a problem in judiciary and police and prosecutor. But, uh, but I think that the most problem comes from that, uh, you know, uh, the definition of the rape. Definition of the rape was very narrow. That was the cause. So we have now, so we have now new law. So we do not accept any excuse from the law enforcement or judges. You must adequately yeah, implement the law. So that is why uh, we uh, demand a new reform. So that is the key issues. But uh, you know that implementation is another story. Maybe we have to do a lot of education uh, to the judiciary and then training uh, to the uh, law enforcement officer. That's another task right now we are tackling. Yeah, so we have you know, enormous challenge, as you know, yeah. And another question is about um, it's about um, before change the law, we need to collect opinions and a voice from the public, and the the audience. Kate, you like to know um, how how you and your organization achieve this to achieve the uh, the public opinions and their to get their support, their voices. <laughs> So this is not only our organization, but uh, you know other organizations work t together. And then so Me Too movement in Japan, uh, you know, change a lot of public pers pers perception about the sexual violence. So, yes, especially a struggle uh, of the Siori Ito was huge influence to, among the general public in Japan. And they how you know a uh, struggle inspired a lot of women. And then, so they start to uh, do the Me Too movement. Yeah. And then, so the Me Too uh, voice uh, are flourished in Japan, not only uh, Shiori Ito, but also many, many women. And also media women, because uh, Shiori Ito came from media, and media women are so inspired. And then, so mainstream media did not take up the rape crime or sexual violence previously. But uh, the male uh, female journalists start to start to take up uh, the, the uh, you know story about the sexual violence. And then especially NHK, you know, uh, that uh, I share the very shameful uh, poll, but then so they start a huge campaign about what the victimization of the sexual violence in Japan. They continue uh, the, some uh, the, the, uh, investigation and they conduct some survey and they produce a lot of documentary and a series of documentary program. And then so uh, not only NHK but other media follow that kind of you know stories. So that kind of media uh, outreach change the society. Also the um, flower demonstration. That was very huge impact to the society. So ordinary people speak up, and it was taken up by media. That, you know, changed uh, that the perception of the general public. Thank you. And another question from Ken John is about um, your suggestion or recommendation to Me Too movement in uh, for Chinese advocates. How how should they? move this forward in China? Yeah, I think that I know, I know brave women, yeah, stand up in China. Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, but then the so result is not so successful, but uh, so we must celebrate the braveness of that Me Too activist in China. And then, so I think that, uh, yeah, so victim must be victim and survivor must be a center of the movement, and then no matter how uh, they face a difficulty in the judicial decision, 
uh, not only uh, that um, lawyers, but also uh, that activists and society must support the activists and the survivors. And then their voice are, feel, are shared uh, by the society that may sometimes uh, cause dramatic change. So yeah, we have to believe. Yeah, so yeah, the very real voice was shared uh, in the society fully that, you know, in the interact with people's feeling and get people's support. Yeah, that can be, uh, you know, uh, moving some big mountain. Yeah, and then so sometimes they can move that, uh, you know, decision maker, even, yeah, in the very difficult country. Yeah, yeah, yeah Japan is not a very easy country. Yeah, but we move their feeling. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I, I understand Japan and China share a very commonality in terms of culture and the patriarchal society and the history. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, another question from this uh, participant is about um, a psychological consultant after sexual assault. And her, the question is about what is the law uh, or the regulations are in terms of conversation between a uh, sexual assault uh, survivor and, and the uh, psychological consultant. Is there any confidentiality between the, the between these two for their conversation? And also related to this is what if there's a sexual assault is ha um, is happened uh, between two parties who actually know each other, not strangers. Um, I think this uh, links to what you mentioned in the presentation about a sexual assault between like um special rela relationships like a, a supervisor and an employee or teacher and student but this me this one this question touches even a wider scope just between two mm -hmm. parties who know each other like it could be friends could be neighbors or could be you know colleagues mm -hmm. yeah Yes, thank you very much. And so uh, in terms of the, the uh, psychological uh, psychological specialist and the survivor. Yes. Yeah, I yeah like, a consult a, like a consultant, like a consultation yeah, between consultant. the psychologist and then the survivor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there is a you know, strict, strict requirement of that, you know, a professional requirement and uh, also ethics uh, of the confidentiality. So uh, there is uh, not uh, yeah, in terms of the lawyer and the client, that uh, you know the confidentiality is required uh, by the internal rule. As such, that there are some uh, you know internal rule uh, of the confidentiality. There's, I don't think there is a specific law, but it's norm and internal regulation of the confidentiality. Yeah, and then so and then so two party know each other. What kind of situation? cause that non-consensual sex. So even the boyfriend and girlfriend, yeah. So if, you know, uh, they don't really, yeah, they don't, you know, that sometimes men just, you know, uh, have sex with girlfriend without consent. Or, you know, she was okay with kissing, but she didn't like to have sex. But she said, she, she said, and no, but you know, he just said, okay, oh, go ahead, go ahead, no problem. Yeah, don't worry, something like that. And then, so she just give up. This is not consent. Yeah, this can be causing uh, that, uh, that this can uh, constitute rape crime. Yeah, so all the time, so, and uh, even if that very, very uh, good relationship in usual sense, uh, for instance, maternal case relationship, a wife and husband, that cause uh, if if there is no consent, it constitutes a crime. So that is why the sexual consent is very important. Yeah, I can see the the, the question related to like um, these cases usually happen in a like a closed room and without any third party witnesses. So when it happens and um, there's a prosecution or accusation, I wonder how it can be prove, uh, proved. For example, most of the time it will be she, he, 
she she says he says situation um so i can can you imagine the 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 proof of this case is very difficult i wonder mm -hmm. in japan has there any been has there been any changes in the evidentiary rules in, uh, related to sexual sex crimes uh yes yeah, so uh usually uh the, the both party uh when it comes to the criminal procedure both party will uh, make some uh, statement uh, before uh, the, the prosecutor or police, and it would be introduced as evidence uh, in the courtroom. But uh, the prosecutor uh, or uh, defense attorney does not uh, use, does not want to use this kind of statement. So they can reject. And then, so uh, instead of accepting the statement, uh, you know, they just call uh, the the um uh, the a victim as a witness, and then so uh, there is examination and cross examination, and then also as uh, a perpetrator uh, that becomes the defendant uh, will uh, present uh, his or statement, yes, and then so uh, judge. A usual, uh, usual, uh, you know, job of the judges deliver the, you know, uh, credibility of the both party. Yeah, and then so there is some contradiction in between the two parties, and then so if there is some contradiction happened, uh, the judge must examine that the situation, and also the supplementary evidence like you know that after uh, that uh, this kind of sexual intercourse there is some email exchange or some uh, social media exchange so in this case that women said i didn't i didn't i didn't think it's happening etc etc that kind of you know that uh, conversation after right after the incident would be taken up uh, by uh, that um yeah, the judgment and also uh for instance there's some uh in japan that usually uh, that the uh, uh, two party have sex uh, that the male have a condom, but if in case there is no condom uh, taken by uh, that man, that can be a uh, one example that you know women are possibly uh, take uh, uh, raped. Yeah, because uh, if women are uh, knowingly and then and accepting uh, some condition, uh, she might uh, demand the condom, but. Uh, without having any time uh, for her to decide uh, a demand these kind of things, that might be a uh, fall within that the new article about that uh, uh, no time to consider or no time to uh, decide yes or no. That's a new uh, article. So that is, uh, for instance, there is no condom uh, taken by. Uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, that is material, materially proved, and then that can, can be uh, that evidence. Yeah. Mm. So that kind of things happen. And also that, um, yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And I can talk many, many, but uh, okay. I guess. Yeah, this is a very, it's a very interesting question, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Another one is um, progressive advances in law are accompanied, accompanied by cultural pushback from more conservative groups. Is this something that you have experienced in Japan? And additionally, what do you think is the best way to deal with this pushback? Um, you mean the backlash? The, the, yeah, the backlash, backlash from the more conservative groups. Yeah. I don't think that this law was unanimously adopted in the parliament. So even if that the conservative party take a read, so yeah, so even the conservative party uh, wanted to uh, introduce this law. So, uh, so this is not the ideology, but uh, rather uh, some uh, male groups that really want to um, you know, um, what can I say? Not the ideologically uh, conservative group, but uh, some male uh, that always attacking women, yeah, uh, by Twitter or social media. That kind of people are uh, exist in Japan, and then so female country female lobby are very successful in some sense. 
The some、uh, people, unanimous Twitter account, and some very, very ultra conservative people are,、uh, you know, attacking the female organizations. You know, they are dominating uh, that, uh, some、uh, the parliamentarian、uh, activities. So that is some, you know,、uh, rumors. Uh, you know, in,、uh, intentionally spread it out. And then I am subjected to some attack. Yeah. So that's very difficult situation. Yeah. But、uh, so we sometimes,、uh, you know, sue the kind of people and then abuser, actually abuser. So we sometimes sue the abuser for the defamation crimes. And also、uh, that the women attacked by that kind of group. Uh, get together, work together, and then so encounter that kind of backlash and supporting each other. That's very important things. We are、uh, amid a very, very difficult situation because of our lobbying activity was so successful. So, yeah, but the、uh, only way is to tackle with this is that、uh, unite together and work together and voice up together. That's only the way. Thank you. Another question from Jia He, and she said, I really admire you and your,、uh, your other activists for your persistent advocacy. And the question is related to procedures. And she said, I remember when I watched Ito's documentary, she mentioned a statistic that only a very limited number of female police, police officers in Japan,、mm -hmm. came to take notes on victims of sexual violence. And when different、mm -hmm. police officers handled the situation, she was asked to take notes over and over again, which led to second, second,、yes. uh, secondary vic victimization. And I、mm -hmm. would like to know whether there are any new changes in the relevant judicial procedural requirements involving rape cases or sexual harassment cases, or any new practices on this.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. So,、uh, the female rate in the police office、uh, is still very, very low. And then, female police officers are not really experienced. And then, they are not trained well about the sexual harassment or sexual violence cases. And then, it was,、uh, yeah, I, when I became a lawyer in 1994, I was so surprised. Female, female police officers are not really、uh, trained. And then, so, and then, not participating to the rape cases. I was so shocked. When 1994. But the situation does not really change much <laughs> now. So it's really problematic. And then, but then, so、uh, in Japan, so there is a target uh, target of the、uh, quota target. And then each um, uh, um, you know, ministry, the 30% of the members should be women. So not only、uh, that the judiciary, lawyers, And government, but also the police. That should be achieved.、Um, yeah, but、uh, it is really difficult right now. So、mm, it's really difficult. You can see that, you know, SD, even SDF, the sexual harassment happened. Yeah. And quite recently, that the voice was raised, but nothing really happened. She must quit. That's the situation in Japan, in the many, many. You know, public servant situation. So that is why police situation can, we can imagine what's happened to them. And then that is why, you know, in the front line of the rape crime, yeah. And then so nobody's, you know,、uh, it's really difficult that the female experienced police officer are,、uh, you know, center of the investigation. We must change this kind of structure problem, you know, after the law was enforced. So, properly implementation needs proper police person and proper participation of the women police. Yeah, that's important. So, implementation, in terms of implementation, we have still a lot of obstacles and challenges. Thank you. Okay, so、um, I'm going to jump back in here now because.、Um, I see we have run out of time.、Um, this webinar has been、uh, really very fruitful, and I want to thank you,、uh, Kazuko Ito, for your wonderful presentation.
And I want to thank everyone in the audience for your excellent questions, uh, which have led to a great further discussion. Um, before you all leave, it would help us if you would complete this very short uh, questionnaire that we are going to throw up on your screen. Just give us some feedback on what you think of the program, and that will help us as we plan the next, um, the next installments in this, uh, in this uh, webinar series. And again, uh, Kazuko, thank you so much. That was really informative. Uh, some people have messaged us that they would like to be in touch with you directly, so we'll forward those messages to you um, as well. Yeah, please, please do so. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all and, and goodbye.